Hello everyone. Let's talk about Ellen Ullman's How to Be a Woman Programmer in your They Say I Say textbook and it is on page 726. Now Ellen Ullman's article does not really have the continuum of opinion in this essay and that is one of the reasons why I have assigned it. There are not any naysayers uh, she doesn't really anticipate any objections. And there are a couple of reasons for this. First off, this essay, uh, or this article, excuse me, appeared in the New York Times. And it was a response to Sandberg's lean in uh, text. So this isn't a research article. This isn't uh let me enter the discourse this is let me respond to what you have said because i have something to say about it so ullman's essay is structured differently her essay is structured in two things what are the requirements to be a programmer and what does it mean to be a woman in this industry then she tells you other problems that women encounter so first off what are the requirements to be a programmer? Well, on page 727, towards the top of the page, she says the first requirement for programming is a passion for the work, a deep need to probe the mysterious space between human thoughts and what a machine can understand, between human desires and how machines might satisfy them. So first off, you need passion. Then she says, the second requirement is a high tolerance for failure. So she's like, okay, you want to be a computer programmer? You need to be prepared for the fact that a lot of your stuff is going to fail and you're going to have to try time and time again to get it right. So if you have passion and you can deal with failure, okay, you might do well at being, uh, you might do well at being a programmer. And then she says, well, what does it mean to be a woman programmer? And then she starts to explain this to you. And she tells you that she entered computer programming in the 1980s when it was very rare uh, to find a woman within the industry. She talks about her experience uh, working for a large corporation. There were only three women uh, employed. There were lots of men employed. And on page 728, towards the second paragraph, she says, over the 20 years that followed, I found that being a woman put me at one remove from the general society of programmers. I resented that distance, but I like to think that it was in some way fortunate that my standing back gave me a clearer view of our profession and the effects of it, of it on society. Then she tells you, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, women compromise 29.4%. Of programmers so if you had 10 people in a room you would be lucky to have three out of those 10 people be female programmers more than likely would only be two so out of 10 programmers only two of them would be women and that's current stats for today okay so she's trying to get you to understand how um, gender does affect this industry. At the very bottom of the page, she talks about the feelings that she experiences because of her gender and her occupation. We women found ourselves nearly alone, outsiders in a culture that was sometimes boyishly puerile, sometimes rigorously hierarchical, occasionally friendly and welcoming. The strange illness meanwhile left the female survivors with an odd glow that made them too visible, scrutinized too closely, held to higher standards. It placed them, it placed upon them the terrible burden of being not only good, but the best. So if you were a woman in this industry, you had to be the best. Now, I don't know if you all saw the movie that was recently out called Hidden Figures and it was about uh, black women. Uh, that helped with the space program. It's sort of like that. They had to be the top of the top in order to be able to work with that program. And they had to figure out how to adapt to the changing needs within the space program. 
Well, that's Ullman's next concern in her essay. She's like, well, okay, women burgeoned into this field, but then the field industry standards changed. And if you didn't have what was called a startup, you weren't going to be successful. And she said that it was usually the young male venture capitalist that had the power to help you with a startup. And so then gender inequality entered the game again. And towards the bottom of 729, she says, the question is how we react to this great prejudice against women. The rule of law and social activism certainly are crucial, but no matter how strong the social structure, there's always that cheek slap moment when you're alone in the anti-woman prejudice. The joke, the leer, the disregard, the invisibility, the inescapable fact that the moment you walk through the door, you are seen as lesser, no matter what your credentials. And she goes on to say that she has no advice for women. I'm sitting there thinking, really? No advice? Wow. Well, first she said that you had to have passion and you had to be willing to fail and you had to be willing to endure a lot of comments from people of the opposite gender. So I think she offers a lot of advice, but she doesn't feel like she can. She feels like that women are boxed into a certain uh, standard if they're going to work in this field that they're always going to be on the outside. And she actually alludes to Virginia Woolf, which, which is a well-known female writer uh, who also talked about the gender inequality and the writing profession. On page 730, she says, this creates a suspension of time, opens a spacious room of your own, in which you can walk around and consider your response. Staring prejudice in the face imposes a cruel discipline to structure your anger, to achieve a certain dignity, an angry dignity. What do you think about that? What do you think about the fact that she's telling you, hey, if you're going to survive in this field, you're going to have to have some sort of anger? Should we as Christians be angry? I know that the Bible talks a lot about God's wrath. What do we do if we do become angry? Have you ever felt alone on the job? And if so, if you felt alone on the job, if you felt like you were an outsider, like you didn't belong, what did you do? Do you think you could do what Almond did? Do you think you could write about it and publish it? Mm, I don't know if I could. I might one day. I don't think I'm at that point yet in my life, but I hope to be there. So, Here's an introduction to uh, some of the gender inequalities that are present in our society. I've posed you with some questions to consider, and I want you to realize that this is not a well-rounded argument, that it does not anticipate objections nor address naysayers. This is just a response to something else that has been written. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. I'll see you on the next one.